Hello everybody, this is Powder Monkey, and I thought uh, today we'd have a look at some advanced wiring techniques in Reason. So we're going to have a look at some audio wiring and also some CV wiring. Now CV wiring, some might consider to be a little bit kind of nerdy, uh, but I don't care because it can really open up the possibilities to you in terms of the sounds that you can generate and the little tricks that you can pull off that you might not, not normally have realized are there. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the reed drum in a bit of detail, and we're going to start off with some audio wiring. Now, uh, usually when we create an instrument, it wires itself into its own mixer channel, as you can see here. So I've written a very simple beat. Okay, and you can see the whole output of that reed drum. As you can see, left and right is going all the way up to its own channel up here. Let's uh, get rid of that for the moment. Uh, so that's going into one and two. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, the stereo inputs on the reed drum are going to channel one. Uh, what we can actually do is use these outputs uh, of each channel and wire them up to their own mixing desk channels. So, very simply, you just click and drag. So left to left and right to right. If you do left to left, it will do them both for you. If you do left to right, it gets a bit confused and only does the one. So you know you're doing it right if you put both, uh, if you do left to left. Okay, so it takes a little while, but it's well worth it. So now when I play my redrum, you can see on the mixer, I've got 10 channels. And that obviously, oops, that obviously gives me a lot more control over what I can do with each of these channels. Uh, so, for example, I might want to add a in effect onto my snare and give it a bit more reverb. So, I'm going to create a reverb. Now, a really good tip, if you want to uh, make an effect without any wiring, hold down shift first, then create and then we're going to create the reed drum up uh, the reverb and there you can see no wiring so i know my snare is on 2 so i'm going to pull that out and send 2 out and into the audio input and again you know it's the right cable or the or the right selection because it will light up if it was wrong it will tell you by not lighting up at all and then that is going to go back into the mixer. So green cables mean that you've inserted effect at some point in the signal path. And now I can add uh, some reverb. So just a touch, so just a little bit of wet. And I could maybe EQ it slightly. And that sounds really nice. So you can obviously see this has massive potential with every single drum hit. Uh, one really important thing I always think is to make sure you label your tracks. So we can't unfortunately label these things or these drum channels or the mixing desk strips I don't think. No you can't which is really annoying. So you would label the effect. So I know that's my snare and there you can see it's written it up there. So that's, I think, vital so you can keep an, an eye on what's going on. Um, you could, of course, also in your mixing desk add some send effects. I'm not going to look at send effects right now, uh, but that's uh, obviously uh, a useful technique so you can add one effect to all these different channels. But I'm focusing on wiring today, so we can see that that's some quite advanced wiring as well. Uh, it has also set up these cables for us, and what these mean uh, is that we can use these pots here, one and two. If we were to have a send effect up here, one and two there would relate to one and two there. But once you've got them wired into their own mixing desk, I think these become irrelevant really, so I wouldn't worry about those. Uh, let's have a look at another bit of wiring, so some cool CV wiring which is where you might have seen I had that little yellow cable earlier on. 
What you can do in the redrum is you can get one drum hit to trigger another without it being part of the pattern. So, assuming you all know how to use the redrum, uh, you can see that I've got a kick here. If I solo it. But I also really like this bass drum here. And I want them to play together, but I can't be bothered to write the pattern in. Uh, or I might want to just meet it out at certain points and, and not worry about the pattern. So what I can do is I can use this uh, CV cable. I'm going to press L to hide the wires. So I'm going to go from gate out of channel 1, which is my first kick. And I'm going to go to number 6. So gate out to gate in. So whenever I play that kick... If you watch this play symbol here, they now both play together. And this obviously has really, really big repercussions because not only can you trigger uh, other drum hits, you can also trigger other instruments. And I think this is where it starts to get really exciting. So let's imagine I want my snare to trigger a synth every time it plays. So let's create an instrument. Let's do something simple like a subtractor. And I'm just going to load up any old uh, sound. I'm not going for anything major. I don't really care what it is at this moment in time. Apart from that, that will do. So what I do now is I'm going to come out from my gate there we go and go to gate in sequencer control of the subtractor so every time the snare plays you can hear it's playing this Christmas sound now that's not obviously the ideal sound so we can start to tweak it so let's turn down our octaves So it's a nice little effect. And we could start to add, for example, some pitch bend on the oscillator. So it's going to fall every time it plays. So we've got this falling shape. We've chosen both oscillators. A slow rate, meaning that it's not going to, that the shape is going to be quite a slow uh, style. And then how much it's going to do it. And we need to see what we want, really. So let's try this again. Okay, so that sounds pretty wacky. Let's, instead of an LFO, try a envelope. So that sounds a bit more interesting. And I guess we could add some LFO to some filter, maybe. So you can see, okay, we could have recorded in those two notes on the uh, on the snare, and uh, we could have put them down onto the sequencer. But you know, why bother when one cable can do it for you? And again, we can see the cable there.